These tiny glowing roundworms may look under the microscope to have little relation to us, but they have allowed biologists at UC San Diego to uncover the mechanisms by which humans and other animals discriminate between disease-causing microbes and those that are beneficial to us. Human intestines contain trillions of bacteria, some of which can cause diseases or produce deadly toxins. But how our intestinal cells discriminate between dangerous or beneficial microbes has long been a mystery to scientists. The answer to that question came from roundworms, which glow green and sometimes red due to the addition of fluorescent proteins. These glowing proteins allow the scientists to see under a microscope what genes are activated in the worms under different sources of light. But that's not all that's so special about these tiny worms. Roundworms have intestinal cells similar to humans and possess a simple, innate immune system that underlies our more complex immune system. And worms are incredibly easy to work with in lab. They have a a uh, generation time of about three days, and they're transparent, so we can look directly into their intestine and see the infection progressing. And they have all sorts of powerful tools to add genes in, take genes out, and really a wonderful community of researchers that share resources. UC San Diego team and two other groups at the Massachusetts General Hospital and the Harvard Medical School found that the way roundworms detect an attack by poisons or disease-causing bacteria is by monitoring the function of their own cells. If those cells detect a deficit in their ability to function, the scientists discovered, they then trigger a variety of antibacterial or antitoxin responses against the invaders. Trammell says it makes sense that the innate immune system used by roundworms and even humans evolved to respond to cellular dysfunction rather than specifically to direct toxins. We live in an environment that's filled with a wide variety of microbes and they can attack us using toxins. And the structure of those toxins can be very diverse, but the manner in which they attack us and disrupt our cellular machinery can be very similar. And so it really might be the optimal mode of defense to have a surveillance system that responds to disruption of the cell as opposed to responding to the structure of the toxin itself. For more on this study and other news in the biological sciences, go to biology.ucsd.edu.